All right, so here we are today. We're going to do a color wheel. If you're going to be joining me in person, um, I'd love you to have done this so that we can all be caught up and up to date on this particular procedure because I'd like you to bring this particular paper with you when you come to your first in-person class. Either way, it's a very good exercise in seeing how your palette works. Now we're gonna work with a red, a blue, and a yellow, which every color of the rainbow can come out of these three. I have an alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, all Winsor Newton, Cotman. So that said, let's put those out. I would put them on my palette, a pea size works. So I would like to have a pea size of that. A pea size of the yellow. I keep them on the side. When you do your palette, keep the paints that you have working in your palette on the side because when they get back in there, it becomes, oh my God, I don't remember which color we were using and how we did that. So <clears throat> those are my three for today. What we're gonna do, I've set up my, my space so you can see it well. This is a regular piece of watercolor paper cut down. It's 300 GSM, I think it's GSM, and 140 pounds. And it's cotton. Let me see what kind that is. What kind was it? Gold line, actually. Absolutely completely off balance. Not at all. 300 GMs, not GSM, and 140 pounds. Cold press. That's what I'm using. So that's what I would like to work with. And what we're going to do is swatch these three colors. So first thing you're going to do is take some of the blue, make a nice creamy mixture with the blue, which is lovely when it's nice and creamy. I like a little more water than that. And there we have it. See how it's getting creamier. You need to activate them. Wake up your paints. And there you go. So I would check to see. You can always use a swatch also, which is a good idea to have. So there we go. So it's a good consistency. Let's grab some more because I just emptied it. And we're going to put the blue on this side of our color wheel. So we're just going to paint the color wheel so that we can see what these colors do, how they react. It's also good work with your brush. <clears throat> Rinse that off because we're going to activate the yellow same way. Make a little puddle, grab some yellow. We don't want these paints contaminated. Even that one got a little bit of the blue from the brush. It's a little less yellow than, because yellow and blue makes green. It's It shows a little bit, so try not to contaminate. This is the yellow. It's not quite as watery as I need. There we go, added just a little bit of water we've got the yellow down. I'm using a six round brush. <clears throat> I'm gonna rinse that out, wipe off here. It's good to have the setup with the paper towel here so that you can wipe off your brush and make sure it's coming out clean. See, it's still coming out a bit yellow there. That's not gonna be effective in keeping this con contamination down because we don't. we wanna really see the true color, so. There we have it. <coughs> there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna activate the red. Same story. Nice and creamy. <coughs> That's a nice, cre nice creamy texture. There we have it. So they are all down. Now that I have the red on my brush, I'm gonna do a puddle of red mixed with yellow. I'm going to grab some yellow, not entirely. So 50-50 split. Let's bring a little bit down there. So we've got a 50-50 split. And that'll go in the center here. So 50-50 orange, 50-50 uh, red and yellow makes a type of orange. Get a bit more, make it so that we can see it. <clears throat> there you have it. So now that we have 50 50 
red and yellow let's do let's do a lot more red with a little bit of yellow and see what that gives us so more red the ratio will be more red to yellow and that'll give us another color so that would go here and this is a little darker but it's still got that corally feel to it make sure it's also a good way to, to know your paints paints are kind of critical I like the Windsor and Newton I also like Kurataki if I'm doing a pen if I'm choosing a pen I like Kurataki if I'm choosing tubes I like the Windsor Newton so now we've done rather than guess this out this is <clears throat> cad yellow so we're going to write that in cad yellow this is a liz crimson a lizarin crimson a lizarin wow crimson now this is going to be this is going to be 75 percent a liz crimson to 25 percent cad yellow this is a 50 50 split so it's 50 cad yellow <clears throat> and 50 Eliz crimson and this one here is what's his name ultramarine blue ultra blue <clears throat> <clears throat> so now that we've done that, we're going to continue on with those colors and see where it goes. So we're looking for more yellow, less red. So that's going to give me something along this line. So now we have 25% red, 75% yellow. So let's see how that plays out. It'll be more yellow, but it'll have a touch of orange to it. So this one is 75% cad yellow and 25% alizarin crimson. <clears throat> so we're working with the reds. We've made a little bit of a mess already. Let's do the alizarin crimson and the ultramarine blue. So if we had full alizarin crimson, let me get it thick enough. And then we wanted to add, so it's 100% alizarin crimson. We're going to want to bring in 25% of this guy. So let's see what that gives. <clears throat> so this is more red than blue. So that's going to go here. It gives a little bit of burgundy. Nice color. The quality of your paint has a very big play, a very big role to play. Um, I was at Michael's, and that's our local craft store, and I used their house brand. I gotta tell you guys, it was not good. It came out with the Arabic gum was coming out all over the place. It was unpleasant. We don't use a lot of paint in watercolor, so it's kind of, if you're gonna bother, just get the right color. Just get some good paints. And, and Windsor Newton are very good paints. Very decent quality. So this is 100% blue. We want to bring it to a 50%, which was this. Was the 100% red, sorry. So now we're going to do a 50-50. So let's get a 50-50 going. And that means purple. It's a very nice purple also. I find... When I paint, it's important that I like the colors and love them. So if you see a color that does it for you and it's in a tube and you can afford it, grab the tube, grab the color, that's it. Then you've got it. So now we're going to be doing red with 25% blue. Uh, no, we're going the other way. 75% blue to 25% red. So it's more blue. <clears throat> and it's darker. It's a darker purple. A 
I'm not sure if that's so different than the other one. Maybe I didn't put enough of the navy, of the blue. So it should be more blue. And there it is. There we go. So that's ultramarine blue at 75%. So ultra blue, 75% to the 25% Eliz crimson. So it's 25%. And this here is 50-50. Ultramarine, ultramarine blue, 50, a Liz Crimson, and this is 75% a Liz Crimson, and 25% ultramarine blue. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. You can continue along your way, and you can do this with any, any palette that you have. If you have a palette and you're going to be working on something, you don't have the that traditional red, traditional, the primary red, yellow, blue, Whatever you're working with, you can do the same concept and mix them up and see where they land so that you you know where you're going with your palette. So now we have to do the yellow, and this has kind of gotten a little out of control here. I'm gonna cheat and I'm going to remove, and we're gonna remove this part here so that we can see properly what's gonna happen next. Just to make sure we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to swap out my water so that we have some clean water. I always like to have two running so that I can make sure everything's clean. Always wipe your brush this way and do not leave your brush in the bowl resting on its tip because it ruins the brush. So now we're going to get some, we're going to do the seven, let's do the 75% yellow and 25, so that's 100% yellow. Let's add the 25% blue. Yellow and blue great makes green, right? So here we have it. I love that green. It's a very army style green. I like that. So there, this is the green. Let's grab a little water so we can pick it up. So there's your, there's our 25% blue to our 75%. So let's do a 50-50. Get some blue going with the yellow. Let's see what that does. So this is the 50-50, which gives a deeper green. I kind of mismatched it there, guys. It's not, it's a teal. And not my favorite color in the whole world, but it's teal. I should have left myself some more room. Because now we want to do the stronger blue to yellow. I'm not loving that because I can't see. So we're going to wipe again because it's just not going to, it's not going to make the point. Let's just clean a spot. Okay, so I want to just, I'm going to just own the fact that I can't no longer see the yellow. And I can, I have wiped away the blue. So we're going to do this as 75, 25, and it's going to be 75 blue to 25 yellow. So let's get this woken up, make a nice creamy puddle. Then we're going to pick up some of this there. There we go. So this is more blue than green, uh, more blue than yellow. I hear my son coming in, so I just got distracted. There it is. So that's the 75 blue to 25 yellow. And there you have your color wheel. So that makes it a lot easier for you to figure out your palette and you can work anywhere from here. So if you're out and you wanna travel, take the three colors, you've got everything you need. So this is 75 ultramarine blue, 25 cad yellow, this color, you can see how the teal plays in. So this is 50-50, cad yellow and ultramarine blue. And this is 75 cad yellow and 25 ultramarine blue. And there you have it. So if you are coming to class and you're just starting out with me, I'd love you to bring this with. If you are just online and 
want to do this exercise, it's a great exercise. So remember when I said don't leave your brush in there because it'll ruin the tip? Well, there you go. Do as I say, not as I do. Have a great rest of your day.